Thanks very much. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll touch a bit on where we see the credit market um, evolving in Australia over the next uh, short while, both in consumer and in uh, commercial. And it, I'm not going to show you credit demand. I'll show you some of our alternative data assets and where we think uh, they might be indicating some, uh, some changes um, happening. So firstly, from a, con a consumer perspective, I guess it's important just to understand what piece of data we see uh, and, um, and, and uh, therefore, you know, how we develop our perspective. So top area here, um, top left, traditional items that you might see are in a consumer bureau. So obviously, broad range of the economy, utilities, telcos, financial insurance, Alt-Fi, um, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, we have a considerable number of customers in the room uh, and both uh, public and private information. We're also one of Australia's biggest contingent debt collectors and we use a lot of data uh, collected um, in, from all of those customers who we see every day in terms of just what, you know, what are the debt portfolio that we're seeing looking like. So. Um, you know, the top green area where, uh, you know, maybe very collectible debt that we're getting, the red, you know, where really it's uh, straight to a write-off or a sale, uh, and the stuff in the middle where, um, you know, collections uh, can have an impact, and then are we establishing promises to pay, keeping promises to pay? That's a really good barometer on the economy that we've got. Uh, we're doing a lot to, the, uh, uh, to our consumer assets, uh, in terms of um, enriching the Bureau, and, and obviously we think uh, our predictive power is increasing quite significantly. And you may be aware we've launched a business uh, both in New Zealand and a couple of weeks ago in Australia called Credit Simple, uh, which is a, a Credit Karma look-alike, um, so individuals able to go on to that platform, um, get their free score, get their free file, um, and use that as a currency to engage in, in offers in the marketplace. So beginning to really see, a, again, a different lens. Uh, and, you know, in the top, we see the people who don't pay. In the bottom area, we see the people who are financially literate, financially engaged, financially active, starting to engage with their credit score and use that as a currency. So uh, some interesting themes there. What do we see in our collections area? Well, frankly, it's not good. We're seeing more people every month coming, so the volume of customers is increasing quite significantly. That can be a function of lots of things, winning in market, um, seasonality, etc. cetera. Um, the, the line that is more concerning to me here is the average value, and you'll see that that's on a distinct upward trend. So the average debt that we see to collect is increasing very sharply. It's not a function of people's spending patterns. It's not a function of people's revenue. I don't know many people who are, are growing at that kind of rate amongst the customers who we serve. Uh, it's a function of distress. And the rate of change in that line is at a historical high. So uh, we're seeing, again, um, amongst a group of the economy, think of this as the probably the, the bottom three deciles, quite a sharp deterioration. Not to the stage yet where people aren't paying, but I think it's uh, an early, early signal of, uh, of distress. So, you know, if, if that's the case, and, you know, I was thinking, of, obviously, thinking about my audience here, many of you serve consumers, where do you, you know, where do you pick the eyes out of the market? How do you determine... Um, you know, wh where are the areas that are, are good lending decisions? Um, you know, what, what are the kind of things that, that we see that are of interest? Certainly amongst consumers, uh, there's a big trend to use the score as a, as a currency. So, you know, Empower Me. We recently, when we launched our Australian uh, business, we did a survey um, of... Um, pricing out there versus optimized pricing available at, at people's scores and, and you know the Australian population is spending eight billion and change more with banks, telcos, utilities, on credit cards, on personal loans than they would do if they were priced optimally for their credit score. And that's an awful lot of money. Um, 
you know, and people are willing to shop around. So, you know, 60% of people would change their current financial institution if they got a better rate. 42% have already got a loan with another financial institution. You know, nearly 60% who have loans would consider switching banks if they could get a better rate. So, you know, there is a market there that is, you know, certainly capable of displacing and individuals are, uh, I think, more and more aware of the fact that they're being mispriced in market uh, and, and therefore uh, willing to move. They do want to be empowered. Uh, you know, they want to be dealt with as cases of one. Um, so it is all about, uh, you know, my score is 740. As was shown on the last uh, presentation, mine's actually 741. I found that chart quite amusing. Um, what, what can I go out, what can I do with that score? You know, what, how can you div, uh, deliver value for me? Uh, we, we have a platform that does that, it's called Credit Simple, um, but there are other ways of achieving it over, you know, over your platforms. This is an analysis that we've done of, uh, of Auckland. Um, and this is a credit map of Auckland. So each one of those little areas represents a discrete, different pocket of credit risk. We can, you know, play this over a, a five-year period and show how um, the credit market in Auckland uh, is moving and how areas are either strengthening or weakening. Uh, pick an area. So let's uh, assume we're going for the, the North Shore, which is a, you know, typically good credit risk area uh, and, um, and, and then let's de di dive down a little now into what we can see about the credit uh, quality of that particular area. So that's, uh, that's the uh, lower shore expanded um, and now we're going to overlay some, some customer data. So um, this particular customer, uh, that's how their uh, customers were distributed over that particular area. And then they picked a target area, which is that kind of lozenge there, and, and dive, dive, dove deeper down into that particular group uh, to, uh, to determine what they were after. So they, this, you know, they, they understood the credit risk. They understood the particular area they were after. They overlaid their customer data, and then they can target exactly who they're after either via a platform like Credit Simple or, or via more traditional means with you know, hyper-segmented, individualized offers. And certainly that's the way we think the market is going in consumer in Australia. The top end of town quite happy. Uh, you know, the middle of the, uh, the bulge bracket in the middle quite mispriced. Distinct signs of risk at the bottom end. And it's really all about how you target your particular demographic and your particular customers um, to get the best outcome. So that's consumer. Let me shift to business now. Again, a little tour around uh, DMB's data assets. So uh, we collect data from all sorts of sources. So public information, our credit bureau, our trade bureau. Uh, we've recently bought a business that um, uh, has a lot of uh, tenders on it. So we see who's participating in tenders, uh, who's winning, uh, larger amounts of uh, collections information, obviously similar to consumer, and alternative data, web traffic, responsiveness of websites, um, and the like. And we have that covering uh, all 2.1 million businesses in Australia. So, uh, you know, there's only about 20 or so thousand businesses in Australia who publicly file financials. Um, there are another 700, 800,000 or so who are incorporated. The vast majority of the market and the market with the funding gap um, are the small and medium enterprises. So there's 1.3 million of, of them, um, uh, you know, largely um, underserviced by the banks. Um, and so, so we have information covering all of those. Also a lot of, lot of insurance assets. So um, uh, insurance claims and the like which can be very predictive of, of business risk. And tender link down there is that uh, procurement portal. So about 100,000 um, predominantly tradies hung off there. You know, we see how active they are in participating in the market, how successful they are. And that's obviously can be a, can be a sign of, uh, 
uh, a sign of growth or a, or a sign of stress. And we put all of that together in, in what we call the, the heartbeat of a business. So it's a, it's a signals-based strategy. We tip all of our data assets in, we match them, uh, and then we predict from them. Um, there are about 20,000 businesses a month incorporated in Australia. About 7,000 of those ultimately trade. You know, many of them trade many months after they've been incorporated, or some trade straight away, some stop um, without being, uh, you know, without uh, getting to a state of deregistration or insolvency. So actually understanding what's going on in a company at any one moment in time is no easy thing. What do we see? Well, um, this, is, uh, this is days past due, so um, the amount of time a business takes um, after its uh, bill falls due to pay. We see about 120 billion a year of spend in Australia, so about 10 billion a month. Um, so it's you know, pretty predictive data. Seen, uh, you know, seen this uh, data set for about 20 years. Um, you know, there was a pleasing uh, improvement in days past due um, post GFC. You know, if you, if you go back to 2008, 9, the numbers were a lot higher. It, it steadily dropped. It's dropped for a number of reasons. Obviously, the economy's been going pretty well. But it's also dropped, as I'll tease out shortly, because big companies have got a lot better at managing their working capital. So, you know, they've started to adopt a lot more rigor in a low or no growth world around managing their receivables, and, um, and that's contributed to uh, a squeeze in, in the middle of the economy. It started to uh, turn around, and it started to turn around predominantly in small businesses, and it's broad-based. So again, like consumer, we think that's an early sign of distress um, that, that's one to watch. How does that look geographically? Well, the, the uh, you know, the the trend and the absolute number is important here. So, you know, New South Wales paying in about 46 days and actually improving slightly. Victoria paying in 43 and deteriorating. WA in 45 and deteriorating. Um, you know, I don't know what they're doing in the ACT, but they're not paying their bills. Um, so, you know, there are distinct geographic payment patterns, and that's partly driven by, um, you know, what sectors of the economy are represented in those particular areas. Uh, this, uh, this is, this is a, a, a chart that I find particularly interesting. So, how fast do big companies pay their bills, and how fast do sm are small companies told to pay their bills? So, uh, you know, as, as small businesses, uh, you're often takers of terms, uh, you're not setters of terms. Um, so uh, despite what the terms may be, the larger businesses in Australia are historically paying further outside them than the small businesses, and they're good at getting good at collecting debt, and they're squeezing the small businesses to pay, and the small businesses aren't as yet sophisticated or have the market power to then pass that on to their customers and chase their customers for payment. So that's a, that's a, you know, a sign that as lenders, of those of you who are in the commercial space, it's a sign I, I'd really watch. Who is it who my SME is dealing with? Are they a big business? So they'll get paid eventually. Um, they're just uh, going to need uh, funding in the meantime. You know, what is their exposure? What's the concentration risk? Um, are, they, are, they, are they short of cash because of working capital jaws, or are they short of cash because they're a business that's struggling? I think it's a, the key question to answer in terms of commercial lending in Australia. This uh, spider diagram kind of shows the, the difference, the, you know, the, the uh, size between those two phenomena. And you know, when you extrapolate that out, there's about a billion dollars, in our opinion, of funding uh, where small businesses are basically having a financing big businesses balance sheet. Um, and there are distinct sectoral um, uh, uh, changes or, or um, uh, sectoral differences in that area. So, you know, agri is very different to mining, very different to construction. The gap is, is largest in construction. Um, I spoke about our um, Trade Payments Bureau. So uh, it, it's essentially a positive uh, uh, um, positive bureau on businesses in Australia. So about a million lines of data a month, 10 billion of spend. 
Um, and what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing 90 days past due um, very much on the increase. So now stands at about 500 million on that 10 billion. Um, the actual amount of overdues has decreased over the last 12 months, but the 90 days past due, so the, the, you know, the bad bit of the ledger, has deteriorated by 75%. So what does that say? You know, it, it says that when companies go bad, they go bad quite quickly. Um, it's that cash squeeze that they're facing, um, and, and that's starting to uh, evidence itself in some of the numbers that we see. And this is a press release that will come out tomorrow. It's our normal quarterly press release on, on late payments in Australia. But, you know, we're seeing the, the average late payment days around about 14. Bigger companies around about 18. Um, Agri, as I said, the best, around about 10. And, um, and you know, uh, at Tasmania there at 11. So, you know, what, what does that say for you guys? I, I think it's two things. Uh, what I've described here is it's... a uh, a wheat from chaff strategy. How do you tell the good from the bad? Um, there are increasing signs of distress in small businesses. Um, speed to payment is a key leading indicator and understanding who your customers' customers are. Um, the velocity of failure is high, so when it hits, it, it hits fast. And uh, you know that's, a, that's a, a risk and an opportunity for you. I found the uh, video in the uh, on deck preso about the restaurateur, a great one. You know, you can see really distinct geographic trends amongst uh, food and beverage um, in Australia, where, you know, people come in and out of working capital uh, um, uh, needs uh, very rapidly. And, and those people who are really sat on top of the data understand it and understand it in the market context are well placed. So, you know, how would I summarize the situation? Well, you know, consumer, look, you know, we've, we've not had a recession for over two decades, so it's not doom and gloom. Consumer credit is generally very good. It's very mispriced. Um, there are signs of increased distress at the lower rate bands. Um, scores are becoming a currency, and uh, the people who we think are best placed to um, benefit from, from those trends and, and really pick the eyes out of the market are those who embrace uh, what we've called hyper-segmentation. Commercial uh, credit quality, again, is generally good. Uh, there are distinct segmental and geographic variations. The small and medium enterprises are being squeezed. So watch the cash, watch the payment behavior, and really understand who they get their business from um, in, uh, in terms of whether that's a risk that you would like to write. Thanks very much. Um, Simon, I've got a question here, and I'll, I'll see if I can take any questions from the floor. A um, uh, question actually keeps coming up in our events a lot, actually. Um, in an environment, this is from Justin, an environment of open data and alternative data, data, social media and telco stuff, will credit data over the medium to long term remain a competitive advantage? So you, you understand the context. Yep. Um, and I, I, I would be a very rich man if I had a pound for each one of the new startups that I bunch, bump into. Say they've got some amazing new model involving Facebook. LinkedIn, telephone behavior, all this kind of stuff. Sure. So uh, these guys are surely going to eat your lunch and, ha ha yeah. and that should people rely upon your yeah. kind of data. Yeah, I used to have an algorithm, now I have an algo. <laughs> um, look, I, I, I think uh, it never rests on your laurels. Um, so, um, and, and as more data becomes public, um, then the value that uh, businesses like my own can add um, needs to evolve. Um, but, you know, the way we think about value, um, you know, ubiquity, so, you know, total view of the market or as a total view of the market as we can get, a broad range of data assets. So I often talk about it in terms of the Vs. A lot of volume. Uh, obviously, you, you know, you, you, you need a lot of data to be uh, predictive from a variety of data sources. So, you know, it's interesting that Somebody might have a loan from a big four bank. It's also interesting that that same person might have a loan from a, a payday lender. Um, the velocity of information, so the pace at which it comes, and then the veracity, so the, the accuracy of, and predictiveness of your algorithm. We, uh, you know, we, we're moving far away from 
the days where you know you might have a, a, a copy of the registry and a few credit inquiries and a bit of defaults um, on, on people or on businesses. But, but can platforms uh, such as in the audience, can they really store a, score a competitive edge by being able to crunch kind of mo uh, social data and all that kind of stuff? Yeah. Does it, is it, can it actually be valuable and can it make better credit decisions? I, I, I think the more interesting data set is the transactional, uh, uh, bank transactions. So okay. I think that's, that's very interesting. And I think um, you know, everybody has their niche around data uh, and that data has has a value both, both to the business and uh, and potentially something you might want to commoditize social data um you know when we've looked at it uh, i mean i think the jury is still out still for out. us it, mm. it's uh, it's interesting um it's good at describing what has happened um, I have yet to find that it beats any of the data set. It adds anything to any of the data sets we've got in terms of predicting what may happen. But I do think it's eternal vigilance. Um, you know, uh, it's do, do you use only social media data in anything you do? We don't. No, no we okay. don't. Okay. Although I, I do a weekly blog to uh, my employees, and uh, uh, this weekend uh, or on Friday, uh, I was reading an article uh, that FICO had published where they said that being describing yourself as being wasted on your Facebook page as an indicator of poor credit risk. So <laughs> I Go made on. sure mine was edited this week. <laughs> I must spike on a Sunday morning <laughs> at about 8 o'clock. Um, one quick last question. Anybody from the audience got a question? We are running quite tight on time. Okay, brilliant. Right, thank you very much, Simon. Thank you. Thank you.